I've realized is that my passions don't bring me like happiness. My okay. passions are something that bring me, that are that almost like something to do. This was literally one of the most depressing videos I've ever seen. So let's talk about happiness. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about trying to help you improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell, because what I like to do is pull things from the YouTube community and kind of use what you're already watching to teach you about mental health. So yeah, Brandon Calvillo or Calvia, oh, I still don't know how to say his name. He just interviewed Elle Mills. He's been doing a series where he interviews people in his cars. They're actually really interesting. My girlfriend got me turned on to him and uh, I made a video the other day about his uh, talk with Scotty and now he's talking with Elle Mills. And yeah, I kind of clickbaited you in here by making you think this video was out about Elle Mills, but as I watch it, I'm like, we need to talk about this dude, Brandon, all right? And hey, don't get mad at me about the clickbait either, because iDubbbz did it with his rice gum content cop video. You all thought it was about Jake Paul. This video is not about this obnoxious, arrogant asshole. It's about an entirely different obnoxious, arrogant some of you might be pleasantly surprised with who this video is actually about. So yeah, anyways, like watching this video, watching this video, I'm just sitting there thinking, I'm like, man, I could not hang out with this dude, Brandon, because he is a bummer. And I just want to make it very clear, this is not a knock at Brandon. Like, if he was somebody in my life, I would have to set up some boundaries or try to help him or both. And if you want some more information about setting boundaries and why I say things like that, go watch my last video about Shane Dawson and Katie Morton and their little therapy session. But yeah, anyways, like, Elle Mills had a very public uh, mental breakdown and everybody talks to her about it. Like, that's like one of the things she kn she's known for. It's something that I've known, you know, I, I learned about her from. And that's what people always want to talk about when they interview her. But uh, yeah, through this conversation, like Brandon actually did a lot of the talking and I'm sitting there, I'm like, dude, Brandon, you got to change your perspective, baby. Um, so yeah, like I will, I will talk about one thing that Elle Mills said in this clip right here. Uh, I don't know. I've been like going into the gym, like working out, like, mm. you know, doing, eating healthy. Mm. So yeah, like I just want you guys to start thinking, like just start thinking, like I just find it interesting. I find it really interesting whenever you ask somebody about how they're improving their mental health, the first thing they say is I'm eating better and exercising. Like, isn't that just interesting? Like we're talking about mental health, but the first thing people say is physical health, okay? And yeah, I know some of you out there are like, oh look, this fat guy here is talking about physical health, not making you happy. Stop it, I'm on a weight loss journey, thank you very much. But anyways, like, don't you think that's interesting? Because something that is a theme throughout this video, as well as with a lot of other YouTuber videos, is that they thought that being a YouTuber would make them happy. And I just want to plant this seed in your head. Like, just know that losing weight and getting to the, you know, that perfect size may not make you happy either. I just want people to know that, or you're just chasing another thing that won't fill that void that you have inside. And I just want you to think about that. Like I knew, I knew for a fact that I had to find true happiness at this size. Well, actually I was 50 pounds heavier last year. I had to find happiness at that size in order for me to still have true happiness as I continue to lose weight. Yeah, I might seem a little harsh in this video, but like I just wanna to explain to you like how people in your life, like their perspective is messed up and you need to hang around people who have a better perspective, okay? Because they are there to be the optimist for you. I was actually just talking to somebody on Twitter. I had some time while I was sending Zach the last video and I was replying to him and they went from having this big issue and within like four tweets, they're like, they said, I noticed that too. It's a pride thing possibly. We all have habits and behaviors we don't understand. What is this feeling? Dot, dot, dot. Optimism? Comfort? What have you done? Right? And like, I'm not telling you to keep me around, but keep people like me around. Like, I am here to offer a different perspective on things because I get it, I've been depressed, I've been in that nihilistic state. You know, I've been in the existential crises. I've been in all those things. But now I am an optimist and you need to keep those types of people around. I've realized that it, I, work is not something that makes anybody happy. I don't think yeah. work or passions make people happy. I think that happiness thing like comes 
you kind of like don't realize it until you're in it. And it only lasts for like a, like a few minutes, like really being very happy. Yeah. It lasts for like a few minutes and it's, and it can be, it's usually something not involving work or like structure. Mm -hmm. It's usually just a random moment. So right here, Brandon, like it's laughable. Brandon says like, nobody likes their job. Like what? What dude, like your perspective is messed up if you think nobody likes their job. Like I'm letting all of you know that, you know why? Cause I love what I do. I love what I do. I get to work with people all day who are struggling with addiction and mental illness and I get to help them. You know what? I love it so much that I come home and I make all these videos that Zach has to edit. That's how much I love it, right? But like what, what I think I notice a lot about Brandon is that he surrounds himself with a lot of like not great people. I'm not saying they're bad people, but I think he's getting sucked into that that kind of pessimistic worldview because that's who he surrounds himself with. Surround yourself with people who love their job and you're going to see that other people love their job. And I, did, I wasn't rapid thinking because I think everybody is always, th has terrible anxiety and is always thinking like yeah. terrible thoughts and like, or not even terrible thoughts, but just racing thoughts. And they don't stop. Like you think a thousand thoughts a second. This was one of the most interesting parts of the video. One of the just most interesting parts of the video because I can relate so much. Like Brendan talks about how happiness is this fleeting thing. It's this fleeting moment. He talks about how everybody's mind races and nobody can actually have happiness for longer periods of time. And I can relate to that. Like one of the problems with mental illness and when our mental health is not in a good place is that we think, we think that this is normal for the rest of the world. And I was living in that for a very, very long time. I was like, nobody's happy, everybody's miserable, we're all just chasing the next dopamine hit, but that's not the case. That's not the case at all. And here's my suggestion. Here's my suggestion for you if you think happiness is fleeting or if you can relate to Brandon or if you are Brandon and you just happen to stumble across this video. Happiness is not fleeting. That moment that he talks about on the Santa Monica Pier, that happens all day long. The problem is, is that we don't notice it, okay? Those racing thoughts, what Brandon is explaining in that moment is this thing I keep telling you all about called mindfulness, okay? Brandon needs to meditate. You need to meditate. When I started meditating three years ago, what I was doing was training my brain to capture those moments more, uh, more often throughout the day. But for other people, like, they're just getting a glimpse. They're getting a glimpse at what so many of us, so many of us who practice meditation get all the time. And now some of you are gonna say, Chris, how do I start meditating? I have an entire playlist about meditation. I have a ton of videos about how to start meditating. I also always tell you to just type in free meditation app on your phone and you'll find some so you can get started. Okay. I've noticed that it's all the same, like all the same, very much depressed, but secretly. Yeah. Very secretly, uh -huh. um, not really putting, and, and just constantly cracking jokes, which is fine, that's what people do in order to feel comfortable. Yeah. I've noticed that it's this hidden, like river of sadness in these people, mm -hmm. and everybody's there and everybody, it's almost like everyone feels that, yeah. but no one's saying anything about it. Mm -hmm. So this, this is another laughable quote. Like they're talking about how like, you go to conventions and like, they don't really talk about it, but like everybody's depressed. Like what? No, they're not. I'm, I'm a perfect example. I was just at a YouTube convention called Vid Summit and I was happy as hell. Not only was I happy as hell, but I was hanging out with people who were happy as hell. Not everybody's depressed. Not everybody's depressed. I made a video about getting to 20,000 subscribers and I said this quote and I will say it again. If you want what I have, then you gotta do what I do. That's how I started improving my mental health. I found people who were genuinely happy despite any circumstances in their lives. I found those people, I'm like, what are you doing to achieve that happiness? And I stuck to them, I clung to them, I followed them, I walked in their footsteps. I'm like, teach me everything, okay? So again, I think Brandon is in a bubble where he's hanging out with people who just aren't truly happy. Uh, say something about somebody who's there because they don't wanna like have beef, beef with that with them, person yeah. and then that person's gonna like fire back at them over Twitter because they found out high school. Yes. And yeah, it's just a lot of, really anti-social people trying to be social. That's what I've... Yeah, the that's really it is, yeah. yeah. So real quick, real quick, real quick, like he's talking about how everybody's like walking on eggshells, everybody's afraid to say something, and then this person might tweet and then you might start beef and all that. No, 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 no. There's two rules, there's two rules. Always be honest 
and don't be a dick, okay? If you do those two things, you don't gotta worry about what you're gonna say, okay? If you remember those two things, Always be honest and don't be a dick. The second one's really important because some, think, some people are honest too often and it makes them a dick. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's weird. It's, it's, weird. it's strange. Like, I, I feel like I don't have any skills. Yeah, I, I, feel, I was yeah. saying, like, I'm like if, even if I wanted to do something else, yeah. I have no fucking clue what yeah. I would do. Because I, I haven't spent the last five years, like, I don't know, crafting some sort of like skill. Like I can't like build things. I can't no. like make a building. I can't. So this is crazy. This is crazy. And this is why you need more people with optimistic points of views in your life. Like so many people, so many people are like, I don't have any skills. I don't have any traits. Ugh. You guys, listen to the words coming out of my mouth. I have a contracted job with a company that is paying me because of everything I've learned with this YouTube channel, with my Instagram, with my Facebook, with my Twitter. Since I learned how to grow those on my own, I am now doing work for somebody else. So I have acquired skills through what I'm doing and now I can do it for someone else for money. So Brandon, if you don't like making YouTube videos, help other people with their YouTube videos, okay? And if you're watching this, all of you out there, I want you to think about what other skills you have acquired, okay? Whether it's organization skills, something like Brandon, I would say he has people skills. That's important in customer service, in sales. So like, do not get this narrow scope. Like I could sit down with anybody, anybody and tell them the list of skills that they have. I guess, I mean, it seems like you're on the right path. I'm working on it. I think yeah. definitely it's good that I've made some progress. Yeah. Right. So I just think, I think it's going to be trial and error and just figuring shit out. And I feel like eventually, I'm still young. So eventually I'll. How old are you? I'm 20. You're 20? Yeah. Okay. Oh man. Yep. What they just said right there. So many people in their early 20s, mid 20s, whatever it is, they have these like moments of what am I doing with my life? Ah, that's what I was saying in the Marzia video, right? Like so many people go through that. Hi, I'm one of them, but listen to the words coming out of my mouth. Are you ready? I was a drug addict and alcoholic until I was 27 years old. 27 years old. L Mills is 20. Brandon is 24. If a guy like me, can screw up his life and go back down to zero by the time he was 27 years old and now I have an amazing life today, trust me, it is not too late for you to figure out what you're gonna do. That's why more people need to be watching and listening to Gary Vaynerchuk because he says this over and over and over again. If you are in your 20s and you are watching this video, you have so much time to figure things out. Just experiment, find what you like to do, go do it. Because if somebody like me like can screw up until they're 20 and I didn't really get on my feet until I was 30 and things are going really great at 33, you can do it too, especially because you're younger than me, hotter than me, and have more energy than me. Because what is it gonna do? Yeah. What is, all, what is you feeling panic and feeling all this stuff, unless you can't help it, but if you're willingly thinking these things and, and, and you're going down a rabbit hole of more and more like darkness, then just, what is it doing? Yeah. It's not, it's not like you're gonna get to the bottom of this hole and there's gonna be like a passageway into like happiness. Yeah. It's just, you're, you're, you're digging yourself and you just, it's not, there's no point to feeling that way. Right here, I found this very interesting because right here you see Brandon and Elle kind of noticing their own thinking traps, right? They're noticing the patterns in their thinking. And as Brandon's talking, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I'm like, you know what? Maybe Brandon, even if he doesn't know this, maybe Brandon isn't so much interviewing people for entertainment or for content, but maybe, maybe this is really therapeutic for Brandon. Some creators, just by doing things like this, it actually helps them process some things. Because a lot of the advice he was giving Elle Mills might have helped himself. Does that ever make you wonder if me making these videos helps me out more than it helps you? Hmm. As I've gotten older, I've realized like there's not much when you have like these conversations, there's not much that you can do to like actually give advice. It's more just venting. Yeah, it's more you know? you're more knowing that you're not alone too. Yeah, that's it's it's nice. So this last clip right here towards the end, you know, they were just talking about they're like, you know what, I don't think we really solved anything, but like it's good to know that you're not alone and that you could vent. Yes, 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 yes. Why do you think I created the Facebook group and the community around that? It's great to talk and know that we're not alone. But you know what I figured out? Do you know what I figured out? 
a long time ago, that only gets you so far. Finding people we can relate to and vent to only gets us so far. That's why I always say we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. Because if we just sit there and just know that other people are miserable like we are, then what we start doing is surrounding ourselves with miserable people. You need to start surrounding yourself with people who help you get into the solution is what you need to do. So surround yourself with people who can relate to your problems, but they help push you towards the solution. But anyways, the topic, the overall topic of this video was happiness. So aside from all the meditation stuff I babbled about, I'm gonna give you three book re recommendations that I will link down in the description below, okay? The first one is the book called Happiness Advantage by an author by the name of Sean Aker. He is a professor of positive psychology at, I believe, Harvard University. His entire field of psychology is helping people find happiness, okay? So make sure you check out this book because there's a lot, a lot. If you're like a science nerd, if you're into science and psychology, you need to read this book. He has scientific studies that can help you develop better happiness in your life. This next one is one of my favorite books. One of my favorite books, and I wish every YouTuber had to read this. I wish everyone had to read this. And this is the book called Super Rich by Russell Simmons. Those of you who don't know who Russell Simmons is, he is the brother of Run from Run DMC. Russell Simmons uh, started Def Jam Records, and he is, you know, uh, a big time meditator. He found meditation through yoga. He does transcendental meditation. I do mindfulness meditation. But if you read Super Rich, you are going to understand how things will not make you happy. Last but not least is this book, Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics. This book is written by Dan Harris. He is an anchor for, I think, Good Morning America. He had a public panic attack, like on national television. If you go to YouTube and type in news anchor panic attack, that's him. He is the number one search one. But anyways, because of that panic attack, because of that terrible thing in his life, he found meditation. And since then, he wrote a book called 10% Happier. This is the sequel to that book, where him and uh, this guy, Jeff, I forgot his last name, but he's an amazing guy. He, they call him the MacGyver of meditation. He helps teach you how to turn anything you're doing into a meditation, right? So I highly recommend you check out this book, Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics. So remember, remember, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. If you are suffering, that is your choice. I have provided resources down in the description below. What you do with them is completely up to you, all right? But let's do this down in the comments before you leave, before you leave me, down in the comments below, let me know, do you surround yourself with optimists or pessimists, okay? And if you wanna go a step, step further, what are you gonna do to fix that or change that? Like, how do you think it's affecting your mental health? All right, let's have a conversation and support each other down in the comments below, okay? But anyways, that's all I got with this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing, and I have a Patreon Q&A coming up very, very soon, so if you wanna be a part of it, make sure you click or tap right there on that Patreon icon, all right? Thanks so much for watching. Stay happy, and I'll see you next time.